Hi guys, welcome to another Learning Electronics Repair video. I have here a mobile phone, but a very interesting one, because it has FLIR infrared. This was sent to me by Blackview. I was sent this free as a review sample. I'm not being paid to make this video, apart from receiving the item. And I'm going to make an honest review of this phone. So let's have a look what's inside the box. Well, here we have the phone. Thermal by FLIR, which is what attracted me to actually agreeing to review this. Blackview asked me if I would specifically look at the use of the phone for electronics repair. So that's what obviously I'm going to do today. We have in the package the phone itself. This is what is known as a rugged phone, the meant for outdoor use. So the FIR example could be used for search and rescue and these sort of things. I've not seen a rugged phone before. It's the first time I've actually handled one or noticed one. So this is the phone. I'm just unpacking it now. It's very chunky. Well, having said that, it's not particularly thick. I mean, it's about as thick as my Samsung when it has the cover on. Yes, yeah, so there's not a lot of difference there. It is bigger. Okay, this is a Galaxy S21 Plus, I think, is my phone. So it's just a little bit bigger than that one. Quite attractive. I think it may come in different color schemes. Oh, it has like a little thing for putting a strap. So that's what we have in there. Little logo, yeah, little black view. Uh, sticker for something okay and we have the instruction book so i'm guessing the first thing i have to do with this is just plug it in and charge it up um i don't know if i need to put a sim in i probably have to find a sim from somewhere so that i can get into the apps and run it so let's have it so we'll plug it in and we'll get it charged and then we can see what we can do with it before I charge it, I'm just interested to see if this comes. Yeah, it does come with some charge in it. So it's obviously, it's sort of ready to go. Let's see how much charge it actually has. So powered by Android. Oh, snazzy. That's a very dark screen on this, I've noticed. It doesn't have too much reflection. Hi there. Start. Can we change this? English, United States. It will do, I think. I'm not sure if I have to choose something else. This is the language. Uh, obviously, I'm guessing English. Well, we'll just go for English. English UK. Is that basically English? Hello. Start. So now I'm trying to connect to the mobile network. I'm sure I can do that. If you have SIM cards, insert them now. So I think we probably have to put a card in this before we can do much with it. Let's have a look. Connecting to Wi-Fi. Okay, I'll try to attach it to my wi-fi and then see what it does so i'm connected to the wi-fi just as getting your phone ready they take a few moments or sorry a few minutes so we'll let it do its stuff and then let's see if we need to put a sim in this well <laughs> i'm just going through all the zillion of questions i've put a pin number in it asked me about uh, scanning my fingerprint i didn't bother uh, system navigation gestural yeah let's just go with what it is next and we are basically running so maybe we don't need to put a sim in this to try the thermal camera which is what we're interested in yeah and what uh, Blackview asked me to review okay let's have a look so we go to camera night is that it video picture or is there some other option for the thermal camera? Maybe it doesn't come up as camera on this. Let me have a look. And basically, it's looking easy to use. So I didn't have to read any manuals. I just had a look through. I found a My FLIR. So we can go to that. Not too bothered about getting the location. Okay, we're on. And this is a thermal camera. So we can see we'll check the specifications in a minute but the first thing we want to look at i guess is how sensitive it is so we'll try the usual thing put the hand on the bench and i move it away 
Yeah, and it left a trace. It actually has a slight delay. There's the hand. So I've moved my hand, yeah. But it's obviously sensitive, so that's a good thing. I haven't read the specifications of this. It looks like it has an option to record video, which would be handy for the channel, that's for sure. I think what we should probably do with this is see how well it works on the motherboard I was looking at on the previous video, the one with the 40 or likely 40 SIO. So let's get that board set up and see how well it works. So this is one of the two A-bit motherboards and we know the 40 one if you watch the video. This one isn't running, it's cold. It's very clear on that. So let's have a look with this camera. So basically to use it, we just go to my FLIR and this starts the camera. Give it a few seconds and there we have. Now you can quite clearly see we have the image thermal superimposed on the visual signal and you can see quite clearly the red which chips are powered up so we have two chips powered up now i'm going to record this on the camera as well so we'll go to mode and we'll go to video and as well as showing you as i'm recording now you can see on the camera we can have a look on the video as well so we can see the reflective things that's these are dots that's the uh capacitors basically and we can see the chips that are running and it's very clear on here actually what is working and what isn't okay so this is the actual for instance the led display we have a few settings on here we can change so if we go to this one i have to stop the recording to do this i've noticed i can't do this at the same time so we go to stop we go to here and we now have various settings so we have iron which is that setting you can see it's just changed the color scheme the ones i particularly like are uh rainbow which is the one we were just looking at yeah and there's one called uh hottest yeah and you see it puts the red dot on and it's giving you the temperature range here i just touched something so we can record again a little bit in this mode as well. We can have a look. So you can see that chip is hottest. And down here, obviously, the LED display. There you can see it quite clearly. So that's a very clear display. I'll have to stop it to get the change mode. Uh, we also have coldest, which will show you the coldest areas on there. That's... Uh, quite nice but actually that seems strange because it's also showing the chips which i know is the hottest so i'm a little bit unsure about uh, that how that is actually working oh i guess it's putting the blue in where it's coldest let's uh, go back into the settings so personally rainbow was the one that i prefer at the moment but it'd be very interesting to play around so again we can hit record and i'll actually show this video in a moment you can see how it looks you can slide this slider up or down, which will alter the temperature range. It's very sensitive. We've also got the sort of, if you like, target. So you can point it at something. And it, I'm not sure if this comes on the recording. We'll find out in a minute. But this is saying this is 33.8, 33.9. This is, in this area, 31.7. And this is the other chip. 34.35 yeah so it seems to me to be very accurately reading the temperature what's the led display 38.5 okay in fact this whole whole area has some heat because it's warm i've noticed the same as the other thermal camera that things that are shiny like the bios will effectively read as hot i had some my finger on there that's warmed it up so that's how the camera is actually working and personally i'm quite impressed with that i like the way you can actually see the layout of the pcb as well i find that very a very good display i'm very happy to work with this camera 
Let's have a look at the bad board and see how well it shows up the fault. The fault being that this chip under the reticule, as it's called at the moment, is not getting warm on the other board. Here we have the non-working board. So the problem with this one is that this super I.O. chip, the thing that's under the reticule now, and you can move this, by the way, this little target, you can move it around, so you can, you can move it about to different places that you're interested in. Uh, it doesn't have to be in the centre, it's quite nice. And just getting sidetracked, that chip is cold, and we can see that chip is cold, yeah. And we can see this one is warm, and we can actually read the temperature. This one is slightly cooler than the other one. I can't remember the exact, I can check on the video. Again, we can record some of this so you can see how it's looking on the recording, how clear it is. But this, without a doubt, shows us the problem on this motherboard. Yeah, that's the battery, obviously a little bit of heat in the battery. Yeah, and this is the display. There's a couple of settings on this I will just show you. This I had to ask, I wasn't quite sure about. But basically, in the settings, if we go to this one, in fact, I'll turn the camera around to do it, actually. We go to the settings. We have to stop the recording. Okay, I'm learning to use this. If we go into the settings here, the one option I will mention to you is this one. Align image, yeah? Image realignment utility. When I first tried this, the infrared image was offset from the visual image so they weren't coinciding properly they were not overlaying correctly which made it difficult to see where the faulty component was so in here effectively you take a photograph of the board and then you can adjust the rotation and the offset with the little sliders i have it set right now so i won't mess with it but that's basically how you set that to align the two images on top of each other Okay, now we can actually have a look at the recording from the camera itself. You'll hear me basically saying the same things on the parts I recorded, but it gives you a very good idea of the quality of image you're getting from this. And then we'll have a little chat after that. As I'm recording now, you can see on the camera, we can have a look on the video as well. So we can see the reflective things. That's these are dots. That's the uh, capacitors, basically. And we can see the chips that are running. And it's very clear on here, actually, what is working and what isn't. Okay. So this is the actual, for instance, the LED display. We have a few settings on here we can change. So if we go to this one, I have to stop the recording to do this. I've noticed I can't do this at the same time. So you can see that chip is hottest. And down here, obviously, the LED display. Yeah, you can see it quite clearly. So that's a very clear display. I'll have to stop it to get to change mode. So again, we can hit record and I'll actually show this video in a moment. You can see how it looks. You can slide this slider up or down, which will alter the temperature range. It's very sensitive. We've also got this little, if you like, target. So you can point it at something and it, I'm not sure if this comes on the recording. We'll find out in a minute. But this is saying this is 33.8, 33.9. This is, in this area, 31.7. And this is the other chip, 34.35, yeah? So it seems to me to be very accurately reading the temperature. What's the LED display? 38.5, okay. In fact, this whole, whole area has some heat because it's warm. I've noticed the same as other thermal camera that things that are shiny, like the BIOS, will effectively read as hot. I just have my finger on there. That's warmed it up. So that's how the camera is actually working. And personally, I'm quite impressed with that. I like the way you can actually see the layout of the PCB as well. I find that very a very good display i'm very happy to work with this camera let's have a look at the bad board and see how well it shows up the fault the fault being that this chip under the 
reticule, as it's called at the moment, is not getting warm on the other board. Again, we can record some of this so you can see how it's looking on the recording, how clear it is. But this, without a doubt, shows us the problem on this motherboard. That's the battery, obviously a little bit of heat in the battery. Uh, and this is the display. There's a couple of settings on this. I will just show you this. I had to ask. I wasn't quite sure about. But basically in the settings, if we go to this one. In fact, I'll turn the camera around to do it, actually. We go to the settings. We have to stop. There we have it, the black view. BL8800 Pro. I was specifically asked to look at this phone from the point of view of using the thermal camera. I've not made any attempt to actually review the phone itself, but I mean, it's a very rugged thing. It's shockproof, waterproof, just about everything proof, really. To be quite honest, even fairly idiot proof, I managed to work out how to use this. The only issue I had was aligning the thermal and optical image and one quick email to Blackview and I had an answer on that. The resolution of the thermal camera, I had problems finding out what it actually is. So I asked Blackview and they tell me that the resolution of the thermal camera is actually 80 by 60, which is low. But from my experience of this so far, because it overlays the optical image with the thermal image, you actually get effectively a very high resolution display. It's very easy to see the parts which are hot. It's very clear because of the resolution of the optical image. So I don't for one minute think the low resolution of the actual thermal image is a disadvantage in this case. I think it works very, very well. I would have to say, I would recommend this. This is it's a really nice thing. It feels very nice in the hand. You've seen the quality of the recordings it makes as well as what's on the screen. I think it's very good. It's something I will definitely use myself. If you want a rugged mobile phone, this is a good one to go for if you need the thermal imaging, without a doubt. If you don't, to be quite honest, for the quality of the display on here, I think you'd have to spend a lot of money. I mean, these are not particularly inexpensive items, but thermal cameras are expensive. And I have to say, I think this is a, a good option, to be honest with you. 100% recommend it, and I'm being very straight about that. I have put a link in the description if you would like. There is a discount on all purchases till the end of August. So you can actually get one of these with a discount if you so wish. And I will certainly be using this in future videos. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed using this. And I will see you all soon on another Word Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.